Hey, 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 everybody. It is I, Hope Giselle, Hope Disguise, and we are back with another episode of Can We Talk Podcast. And actually, I'm going to start saying that this is a multimedia cast because it definitely is. Some of you are watching this on YouTube, some of you have Patreon early access, and some of you are listening via all of the podcasting places in the world, and I appreciate every single one of you, no matter what medium you are using to get your Can We Talk fix. Now, this episode is something that is super special to me. I actually have two of my favorite sisters on, and you are going to be introduced to people that you already know, but this is just the girl chat. And we're going to be talking a lot about the ways in which Black trans women talk when people are not around and some of the things that we want people to know, just as sisters. Uh, so it's an impromptu talk that's going to turn into something that's whatever the fuck it turns into. I don't know the episode's name. I don't know anything about the episode. So I'm coming at this new and fresh with you all. But by the time it's released, y'all will know the topic. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to my sisters, Miss Riley Knox and Miss Isis Kang. Okay. Can we talk? Can we talk? <laughs> oh, a minute, a minute. Hey, I just hey, want to know, know your name. <laughs> okay, so this is the girl group better known as DDG. DDG. Yeah. We're not going to tell y'all why, but just know. Look out for Look out for our now, this, Here's the thing. I guess people are going to try to now figure out and try to make up something for what this and, and, and Dix is not one of the words, darling. Dix, <laughs> Dix is not. Dix has nothing to do with our girl group name. <laughs> just so you know. Dix is not a part of this. There's no Dix that were harmed in the filming of this. <laughs> in the making of this group. No Dix were harmed. That is not what happened. Well, <laughs> Riley, Riley, you, you let us know. Oh. Oh, ooh, the shade. It's the shade for me. It's the shade for me. So I brought y'all on here because we need to talk. We've been having like a lot of background behind the scenes, sister talk. And I just wanted to, I figured, and I think all three of us agreed that like a lot of the things that we've been talking about while they've been funny and like really sisterly, like we were all just like at a space where people need to hear some of the stuff that we're saying. And especially as it pertains to like one of the topic, men need to hear some of the things that we're saying, just because we're having a lot of conversations behind closed doors. And we've also been kind of sort of having some really interesting debates with one another about the ways in which we are navigating certain spaces and kind of holding each other accountable for some of our own bullshit um mm -hmm. and so now we are here we're talking about it and i just wanted to jump into and i guess i'll kind of like sort of put my own business out there first and then we can move from there and kind of see where the conversation leads us so essentially we ended up having a you know a sister moment because i had what can be considered, what what can be and will be considered for all intents and purposes, a breakup. And um, this breakup kind of rocked me and it rocked me for a bunch of different reasons um, because I really, I'm not gonna say loved, I, I really love this person. I really love his energy and his aura and it lasted for about a year and everything just seemed like it was going to shape up until it didn't. And so I, I remember reaching out to Riley and Honestly, like a lot of the things that I had been going through prior to ISIS ever being added into the conversation, like Riley was one of the first people that reached out to me when I was like really in the in the depths, like the dark place. And I you actually didn't know Riley, like why, but <laughs> no, when know. yeah, like honestly, this was like part of the extent because when I first just for clarity um, and transparency, because I don't believe in trying to open up a space and then being like, oh, I don't want to tell y'all that. Unless it's just something that like I really didn't realize I was going to have to say. Um, but I knew that I was going to have to say this. So um, I was going through a moment where I was really feeling suicidal. And I haven't felt that way in like seven years. <clears throat> and, um, and especially not because of a man or a loving relationship sort of deal or whatever the case may be. And um, I think I posted something that was kind of triggering on social media and immediately like Riley like texted me, like there was no DMs. It was just like, sis, what is wrong? Like what's going on? Um, and like that will go to show you like how deep I was in on this particular re relationship. Fast forward, we add in ISIS and she drug me for filth. <laughs> and she drug Riley for filth because- She has a way of dragging us. She has a way of dragging us with love that we um, enjoy uh, having. But I think I just want to open up the conversation with saying like, 
<laughs> the idea of dating while trans, and especially with this new idea of dating men who are open about their trans attractions or their trans amory or whatever the case may be, um, there's been a conversation swirling amongst the girls of whether or not men are actually trans amorous or if this is just a new elevated way to be trade. <laughs> well, I think it's a really fine line. I think that it's really important for this new era of conversation that men are having when they are upfront with wanting to love us, right? Wanting to appreciate us openly because that is what we need. But I have to say, there is a difference between celebrating and uplifting us and telling people that they should love us. And there's a fine line of that versus still fetishizing us. You know, we we are still human. We want to be loved because we deserve love, not because of the way of something that we cannot control. So I think that's a really touchy topic. And whenever I hear people talk about it, it always makes me sit back and just listen because I want to hear people's perspectives. But I think it's important if, you know, if, if we're celebrating loving women, especially Black trans women, it's important to include love in that. You know, I've seen it so many times in the past few years uh, when a man come out and say that he loves us, but then we find out it's just better sizing us or just hooking up with all different, it, hooking up with a girl like me does not mean you love a girl like me. So I, it's like, I appreciate the conversation, but you have to leave by example. Are you going to love my sister, or do you just want to hook up with her and then throw her away and hook up with the next girl? Because if so, we already have a term for that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, so I have to play devil's advocate because y'all know against my better judgment, I'm usually the, the, the queen of empathy, right? And so I was talking to one of my guy friends <laughs> and um, he who shall not be named <laughs> because, you know, he, he brought a really dope point to the conversation that I felt like needed to be added because I hadn't thought about it this way. Um, and I do respect it. So our trans amorous, now mind you, I'm asking this question as a rhetorical one because I got a response of my own, but I'm just saying. So the question is, are trans amorous men not allowed to engage in hookup culture the way that everybody else is allowed to engage in hookup culture, right? And my response to that is, absolutely. Trans, being trans amorous does not mean that you become a saint. It does not mean that you are not allowed to enjoy what it means to find someone attractive, but not want anything serious out of that. However, the problem with a lot of you all is, is that your trans amory is not phrased in a way that is regular or that lends itself to be believed that that is what you're going to be doing. The way that a lot of trans amorous men phrase their messaging makes it seem like y'all are ready to get married tomorrow if, if need mm -hmm. be. Like the way that a lot of y'all phrase y'all messaging is on some like love trans women. They are the Messiah. They are the new coming of women and they deserve everything that cis women are, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so when you're out here like really aggressively putting out content or saying things where it's just like trans women deserve love, we expect that you're willing to get it. Like we think that you are ready and willing to give that love that you're saying that we deserve. And so yeah. it's not to say that you can't engage or that we don't expect you to be a man because we're being women, <laughs> right? But we, it, it's to say that we have a higher expectation of you because that's what you told us. I can't be out here saying, oh, like I'm against sex work, like sex work isn't whatever, 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 but then I'm the top number one bitch on OnlyFans. Those things don't make sense. And so it's just like, if you're going to put out a certain message, then what is going to be assumed of you is that that message complies with who you are in your daily life. And so if you will, if you know that you want to engage in hookup culture, then your messaging needs to reflect that. And it needs to be something that's cohesive with what you're saying online. Yeah, but you know what? I, I think there's this new wave, and it's so strange because a few years ago, this would never have happened. But there's this new wave of guys that are very open about being attracted to trans women and want to date trans women, but benefiting from gaining popularity from it. Mm. And, wow. and, Stop talking about my ex like that. 
<laughs> but like, it's like, it's like now it's like, oh, I'm going to come out and say that I like trans girls and be celebrated for it. But then you're doing like, you know, are we allowed to curse on here? Yeah. Oh, but then doing fuck shit. Like, with, with oh. the- <laughs> no, you didn't. Like, Girl. You said Look. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's like it's like where is in the past they would have been too scared to say that they were into trans girls, but now they're like, oh, I'm into trans women and I celebrate it and now let me gain some popularity from it. Let me gain some kind of notoriety from it. And you know, let me, you know, it which is it's like this new wave of this happening slowly. And I'm like is this what is about to keep happening? Men that are in the public eye or men like are going to start doing this in order to elevate their career or to get a resurgence in their career <laughs> or uh, uh, their second half of the of, of the 15 minutes of fame? Like, what what is this? Yeah. I'm, right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, speaking, I haven't so been, been like my last like, relationship six years ago, girl. By the time I realized that we were living together, he was shaking my pocketbook and I didn't even, I'm like, Oh, oh <laughs> snap! I didn't. Oh shit! That just happened to me. Mm. Oh, oh he, oh they switched up the rule book. Mm-hmm. Oh, as much as we evolve, they've evolved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and and uh, along with that is also better lingo, right? You go out with a guy, they they say certain things, and I feel like a lot more guys are saying like, oh. Do you want kids because I'm down to adopt? And you just like, oh, like, where did that, that come from? Oh, oh, no, girl, I've heard it so many times. I've heard it so many times. And now it's like, I know, but you, don't they mean it when they say it? Girl, they just trying to get up in there or you get what, what they I can. Or, yeah, <laughs> but, but it, it's so many. That. So that's me to Riley. I'm like, Riley, don't listen. Girl, they all say this. Just like we've evolved, they've evolved. They know what to say. They know the sure. words to say that positively affect us and stimulate us to make us feel like they're not different. They're completely they're different, different from the other yeah. ones. Yeah. And that's, that's my rebuttal, is that there is this... I feel like a lot of the trans amorous men don't understand that what you are trying to do or what the perception of what trans amorous men are doing is trying to actively say, I am different from trade. I am separate from trade. I am Mm -hmm. not that motif, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's cool and that's great and that's fine and dandy. But the thing that happens is when the girls are going after the guys that are clearly trade, we have an expectation of them as well, right? And so trade gets away with certain things because we expect that from them. Mm -hmm. When we are coming after the men that are trans amorous, there's different sets of expectations for you. And the only reason that there's different sets of expectations for you is because y'all set them. The same way that Trey sets their own tone, so do trans amorous men. And I haven't seen a lot of trans amorous men saying anything short of things that are Messiah-like. Like I, you know, they want to put themselves on this pedestal, like I can do no wrong and trans women are beautiful and I am going to love one and marry one. And and I'm I'm doing doing this for you. And your community. Right. I'm trying to help your community. Yeah, so so my question is, how? what is the line between, okay, so it's almost like they're in the middle of trade mm-hmm. and chaser. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they're not trade, but they're not quite a chaser, but may, like what is, what is that? How, I mean, my, my, my thing is like, what would be your advice to the guys that are trying to about them? I don't know. Like, uh, what would be your advice to who are trans amorous as to not come off as being like, I don't know. What, what Ooh, girl, they, girl, they're going to have their notebooks ready, girl. Take what? notes, guys. Guys, take notes. But I already Time to level up, guys. guys. Time to level up. Because they know we don't want the, they know we, that we, we know we don't have a future with trade, but then they know we also don't want the fetishism of if that's a word, of um, of of the chasers. Chasers. So I, there has to be clarity on what exactly it is and what type of man. Like my thing is you can be, I think trans amorous or trans attractive, whatever the fuck word that they want to give themselves, whatever title that they want to give themselves is fine. It's your messaging has to add up with what you are actually doing in your real life. 
You yeah. cannot, like your Amory is not acting, right? Because what happens is your Amory becomes your activism and your activism has to show up in real life and in real time. Mm -hmm. I can't be out here saying as an activist, oh, I support black trans women, I support black trans lives, I support black women, I support women of all kind. And then when people meet me, I'm out here like, but no, men are the head of the household. And like, I just, you know, I'm gonna do whatever my man, like that doesn't add up. And so as trans amorous men, you can't be out here saying trans women deserve love, trans women deserve marriage, trans women deserve X, Y, and Z. We deserve to be seen a certain way, blah, 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 blah. And then when people meet you, you're like, yeah, y'all deserve that, just not for me. There needs to be something clear about your messaging that says, you know, me as a trans amorous guy, I'm at this point in my place and I think I want to help guys who are also at this point in your, in your stage, right? It goes back to the idea of you cannot be the blind leading the blind. You cannot be out here putting out messaging, talking about what it's like to be in a relationship and telling other men how to support their women or their partners in relationships when you're not in one. You can't be out here trying to tell people how to love and what it's like to love and, and, and do all this other stuff when you don't wake up to a, a, a trans woman every day. You wake up by yourself every morning. And so how can you possibly steer, you know, these other people and teach them how to do these things that you don't, don't that you've never done for a lot of the trans amorous men that I've, I've seen? A lot of them have never been in a relationship. They love us. They know us. They fellowship with us. Some of them have even fucked us. But a lot of them have never even been in relationships, but they're out here teaching other people how to be in a relationship that they don't, that they've never been in. And some of them don't even want yet. Mm. And you look, look, ISIS is over there. Like I'm over it already. <laughs> like, I, you know what? See, it's so I mean, funny people, because people out there don't even know. Well, I'm about to, I'm about to, to, to put them on game right now. What people don't realize is, so it's so funny to me, the dynamic in this group, because I'm the oldest in this group. However, I get scolded the most. Yes. <laughs> Hope is her, her, her Hope's name fits her because she is the hopeless romantic. She's literally like, she holds on to there's hope. That there, it no, but be. that's the thing. I've always been a hopeless romantic too, but I feel like, girl, girl, I feel like, okay, well. Sit, sit back real quick. Sit all the way back. Sit the fuck so, back. But, but, then, but then me being the oldest in the group, <laughs> but me being the oldest in the group, I'm always the one getting scolded because I'm the one that's like, I fall for, I don't know that I even fall. Yeah, no, I do fall for. I, I, I do. I hear somebody, I'm like, oh, this is going to be different because he's saying all the right things and he's doing all the right things. Girl. And then here comes I just with the next. Like, or with a girl, I didn't even try to hear this. Talk to me when it's been a month, whatever. I'm talking about after the first date, I'm like, ah! And then hope but I've just, always just been that person. But just more recently, I, everything just clicked and fell into place. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay, I get it. And and I completely love my space. I love my, my time by myself. And I think that's the important part. I've learned how to enjoy my time. So if I'm going to bring you in, you have to be able to elevate that moment. You have to be able to elevate the time. You have to be consistent. And that's, that's number one. Most, most guys, they can say whatever they want, but consistency is the most important thing. And a lot of people eventually break that because they, they can't keep the facade up. Only, they can only keep it up for so long. And then you see I what they really want. I I need consistency more than honesty because I feel like if you're consistent, you're going to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, also, and also, I'm just not about to bust open with nobody. Like, I'm demisexual. I need a connection. So I'm not about to just bust it open for for just anybody who just whisper anything in my ear. So it's just like, okay, what? So, so after a few dates and you didn't get it yet, let's see how you are then because you assumed I don't know. You know I feel like they assume like, oh, I'm like, I look like a model or because I'm a black trans woman. I don't know. But they, I feel like they assume they're going to get some. So it's you like when what? you don't get it, then I see how you act. It's so true what you just said, because a wise person once said, I heard a wise person say that uh, you never know someone's true colors until they don't get what they want. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I like that statement. And I, I like that statement for a lot of reasons because you don't know people's true colors until they don't get what they want. Um, and I think especially in this particular relationship, yeah, I felt like, I really felt like whenever he did not, or when he felt like he wasn't gonna get what he want, there was this manipulation that would come into play. 
um, into the situation where it would be like, you're taking this away from me, or I felt like this was not gonna be available to me. And so there was some sort of manipulation in some way, shape or form that would then lead to me being drawn back in, right? To give him what he needed or, you know, to support in, in whatever way. And I think the, the thing that was really like the wake up call for me, and this is why I didn't agree with you, Riley, when you said if people are consistent, then they're more like, I don't feel like that because people can be consistently harmful. People can be consistently lying. Yeah. People can be consistent yeah. in a multiple, you know, a multitude of ways. And in some ways, people can be consistently hurtful and not give a fuck about your feelings. Well, yeah, and, you just, um, but, 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 that's, but that's the problem <laughs> I have with us in general, because we ex we accept that shit. That's not love. When someone show you who they are and when they treat you a certain way as adults, it's on, we have to take more. And me being somebody who's seen my mom in two abusive marriages, who went through two abusive relationships, I had to step back and say, they progressively got worse, but they showed me who they were. And as an adult, I have to take responsibility and say, I need to stop seeing people for who they say they are and start seeing them for who they show me they are. And that's on me because they're going to consistently be themselves and get more and more comfortable. But how much are we accepting? How much are we accepting? And and that's important. And that was a hard conversation for me as someone is just like, I'm a hopeless romantic. I give everything to, to my boyfriend. Like, why am I being treated like this? No, bitch, because you continue to accept it. When they show you that first red flag that you know is a deal breaker, leave. Because they should know if they love you, they should know what, what, will go and what wouldn't go and they see what they guys who are not good for you will see how much they can get away with yeah. they will continue to do that shit and that's not love so stop when they don't when they don't do the right thing fuck that find you somebody better because the right guy is going to do all the right things and it might not be perfect but the right guy is not going to treat you like shit and not going to make not going to gaslight you or make you go through all these things like no or call it out and if they continue to do it then that's that and it's just like oh shit why are you treating me like that? Change the conversation from why are you treating me like that to why am I accepting this? If I love myself this much, why am I accepting this from this person who does not care about me? And, and I really have to look at things like that. And it really made me take accountability of myself and, and my and, and what I decided to stay through just for what for love or cuddles for what? I love my own space. I love to be by myself at this point. So if you're going to come in, you got to be able to elevate. You can't be somebody that make me feel like shit, who, who lead me on, who tell me they love me, but don't show me that they love me. I'm too old for that shit. What, just to be cuddled on? Bye. No. And then I think that's something with us that, that we accept things because we just want love and, and we want to be appreciated. Bitch, look in the mirror, beat your face, snatch your waist, and give all yourself all the love you need and let somebody else add on to that. We got to stop looking for love from these motherfuckers that don't deserve us. Period. I, I think there, there's a lot of truth in that statement, but I feel like what we also fail to realize is that most of the time, especially as Black trans women, we don't need that shit. We find men that need that from us. And then we spend all of our time trying to be mm -hmm. available to give those things, right? Mm -hmm. Like as insecure as we can be <laughs> and as, as dysphoric as we can be sometimes, I feel like oftentimes the men that we choose to cuddle up with and, and whatever and all those things, they need more from us than we need from them. But because okay. the social fucking dynamic says otherwise, I think that while we're in it, both of us believe that this is for her. I'm doing this for her. Yeah. I'm throwing my bullshit on her for her because she needs to feel like she's needed. She needs to feel like she mm -hmm. has something to do. She needs to, and we accept it because we feel like, you know, in order to be useful, I want to hear his pain. I want to hear his trauma. I want to help him through it. I want to build him through it. And the entire time we are being drained of all of our fucking energy, all of our all of resources, it. All, all of, of it. it. And they are reaping the benefits of becoming a better person and, and then, then we move sometimes. on to the next and then, and then when they get that tank all the way full, girl, guess what they do? Full throttle mm -hmm. onto the next dumb bitch who, who yep. just accepting then all then of their bullshit. Them. And then when they leave, when they leave and move and move on to somebody else and give it to somebody else, then we feel empty and feel like depleted and like drained, and then have like nothing left for the next 
for the next person that could possibly be the one. And it's, you know, we, it, we've given so much of ourselves. Like I, I find that I look back at old relationships and I'm like, I gave way too much of myself, way too much so of much. me. So much. Way too much. So like much. you didn't deserve none of that. And I gave you almost all of it. So that's really ridiculous. And then right. I, I look back and I'm like, that's just, it, it's, it's like, and now I'm feeling like a certain way going on to the next relationship because I gave you so much and you didn't even deserve any of it. And now the next person comes along and I'm like, mm. And, you know, well, but I think, go ahead, Hope. I was going to say, because my thing is, so there is a, a question of accountability for me too, right? Like on my end and in my case, the one thing that I can say is that we were both being very honest. I was being honest about my feelings every step of the way, but I think that it goes back to what Isis was saying was that I wanted to believe that I was the exception. And in a lot of ways, I feel like I was. I feel like I was the exception to the rule. I feel like I broke down through a couple of those barriers. I got through a couple of those brick walls, bitch. I broke through the diamond mines and I got to that ruby door. And at that ruby door, the, re the representation of what it is to be in a committed relationship, I started picking at that bitch and I realized that had I listened to him at the brick wall, I wouldn't feel the way that I feel. Yeah. Had I listened to him at the brick wall when he said, I don't want to be in a relationship, knowing that I did, then it could have been something fun. It could have been something light. It could have been something casual. But because I wanted to be the exception, I was like, nah, I cracked this already. Let me just... And then I broke down that one. I was like, ooh, this one got a hole in it too. Let me just... And he was letting it happen because it benefited him. It made him feel mm -hmm. good to feel like he had an emotional place to go. It made him feel great to feel like he could trust somebody. It made him feel awesome to feel like somebody had his back. It made him feel amazing to have a sexual connection. But that Ruby door, bitch, that was impenetrable. And that was the shit that from the beginning I knew was non-negotiable. But because I was hell bent on being the exception, like most of us tend to do, by the time I got there, and it's not to excuse any of the shit that he allowed to happen along the way, because I was being just as transparent as he was, right? But it is to say that I think a lot of times in these relationships, a lot of us will get to that brick wall, and instead of us just being like, oh, okay, we want two different things, this is how I wanna deal with this, or I don't wanna deal with this at all, we'd be like, oh, but it's a crack right there. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop looking at those cracks and feeling like we can be the exception. Because before we know it, we get all the way down to the final, you know, level of that fucking mind. And we're just about to pull the biggest fucking stone out. And we realize that that motherfucker is embedded in the rock. And it, it, it just wasn't ready. It wasn't time for us to pick that one. And it's just like, I feel like a lot of us need to take accountability for the fact that sometimes, like Isis said, when they show you who they are at the beginning, believe that shit. Because if you don't, then there is a piece of it that is definitely your fault when you end up hurt. Oh, for sure. For um, sure. I want to say earlier this year, I tried to date this guy. We dated for like a month. And he took me like on a weekend getaway, you know, just me, him, and his dog. He was doing all the things that showed me that he was different. And then he sat down with me after like all these days and after we went away and had this nice romantic weekend together. And he's just like, you know, I just don't, you know, I really, really like you. I really, really like our conversation and spending time with you. I just don't see us in a relationship, but, but I still want to hang out. And I'm just like, and I had to retreat. And then I was like, okay, but all that, no, he's scared, which they usually do get. And then I was like, no, you know what? Let's just keep... So we continue to hang out. He want me to come over. He want me to stay the night. He want me to cut. And then and then we had a conversation. And then he wanted to go to church with me. Girl, I was like, this is it. I found me somebody to go to church with. Of course, the sermon was about relationships and picking the right one. So I'm sitting there like this. I'm like, you funny. Um, and I say all that to say, we end up having a conversation. And he's just like, oh, you want to, you know, come over and hang out? And I was just like, 
No, because, you know, that's not what friends do. And, and like, I have feelings for you. And this is just too much. And he was like, well, I thought we were just like, friends hang out, friends cut. I said, look, what you're doing is problematic. What you're doing is not being a friend. You want all, you want me to give you all the benefits of a relationship. Because it's not just, it's not like hooking up. We was, we had intimate time together, but we weren't actually hooking up. Because for me, I wanted the commitment. And I feel like it was so close. And I think that's why he got scared. So it's just like, oh no, but like, you know, we can still do, no, no. And I had to remember, you know what? He told me at that moment, that should have been it. And I, and I continue to kind of let it go a little bit because I'm at the stage of my life where I really don't give guys a chance. Like, so it's where did I even try to date somebody? And I was like, you know what? Fine. Like he's different. You know, I always try to date guys from different cultures because I'm like, okay, they're going to be different. And he was amazing. But in that moment I was like, nope, he showed you at the beginning. Or it wasn't all the way at the beginning because we were already dating. But I was like, you already said that. And now if if he decides that he wants something different, he have to circle back around and put in the work. And I have to decide if I, if I want it. But it's not my job to help him with his with doing the labor of deciding if, if he's strong enough to be with me. Because that's really what it was. That's not my job to take somebody through the fucking labor that they need to go through. Go to a therapist, talk to somebody. It's not my burden to carry. You figure out what you want. And if I'm not it, leave me the fuck alone. Don't ask me to come and go on these weekend trips with you or or come over and hang out with you and your dog or do this. Or I, no. Because yeah, you, know you, you, want, you want more. But what you want and what I want is two different things. And I have to just step back and say, he already showed you and he told you. And they were two different things. Yeah. But listen to what he told you. And, yeah. and what he said was, I, it's just not going to happen. So I was like, I'm not going to be that bitch anymore like I was in the past and just try to put in the work and think I'm in the exception. Because guess what? We are never the exception. And I use that I use that mantra for everything. I use that for friends who, who were super bitchy and horrible to people. And I'm like, oh, but I'm the exception. And I got burned so many times thinking, oh, they're not going to treat me like that. And then they do. And the same thing with guys and the same thing with relationships. It's always the same thing. When you see the way people go through their everyday life, if you think that's not going to integrate with how they eventually treat you, then you're crazy. Oh. Mm. It's eventually always going to catch up. You got to see how people move in real life. We are never the it's exception. A, and that's not even about being trans. That's just being a person. Yeah, you know what? I've gotten to a point in my life, especially coming to this next big chapter of my life. I I have realized that I have got to, I'm no longer, I don't have the, the patience, the time, or the, even really just like the want to try to convince people of things that they are committed to misunderstanding in life. Yeah. Just with me. Like trying to convince people of something or trying to spend all this time trying to um I've just gotten to the to the point where I I do not have the I do I'm just not in a place where teaching you something or trying to convince you of something that you're commit especially two things. One, I don't have time to teach anybody anything about like what it's like to date me and also go read a book, go read go watch a documentary, go do something. Like I just I don't have it. Like I'm not I'm not trying, if you've never dated a trans girl before and you're like, oh, so, you know, I want to tell you, you know, they wanted me to explain all this stuff. For me, that might be fine for somebody else and they might want to be great. That's like an education, all this stuff. I don't have time for that anymore. Sorry. I really just don't. Like, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you what I am. As the ABCs. A Go to Google, something? baby. The Is ABCs are all alien, there. Some alien that you don't know, like, you know, I'm human. And if you know how to deal with human beings, you should know how to deal with me. That's number one. The second thing is I'm also not spending or wasting time. And this is not just with dating people, but also just in life, trying to convince people of things that they are, they literally have a commitment to misunderstanding or just not get it. They've committed to it. They don't want to even, they don't even want to understand. So I'm not sitting there trying to convince, like, you know, I've got, especially with that, like, I said, you know, with the guy that I started dating at the beginning of um, COVID, not to get too personal, but mm -hmm. like I got to like it was great, but then I got to a point where it's just like I'm not gonna try to convince you that I'm the one. Cause yeah. if you, I either I am or I'm not. The mixed messages aren't working. I'm not gonna sit here and try to 
try to persuade you and convince you of something that you are literally committed to not getting. But sis, you gotta all also stop giving so much so early. Yeah. You gotta yeah. let them earn that shit. And that and that shit doesn't is not I'm not talking about sex, I just mean in general, we are yeah. prizes. Yeah. We work so hard to be who we are. We are talented, we are beautiful, we have amazing hearts. We are driven. We have courage. Why the fuck yeah, do they but just see, that's all the thing. You talk about this. giving way too much. And you, you're saying that. I guess what happens to me is when I meet someone, I want to convince them that I'm so, like, I all of those things. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm so open and I give them so much of me and so much of my time and energy because I want them to see that I'm cool and that I'm whatever and that I'm the girl of their dreams, I guess. I don't know. Um, Sis, why don't you? They, they need to be proving that to you. They need to be doing that for you. Yeah, true. That, it, true. It all, you, in the beginning, they do. But you all, you know this from what our talks. In the beginning, they do, and then something happens, and then I'm like, oh. They usually like, oh, oh, wait, what am I doing? Oh, she's friends. I can't do this. Oh, yeah. It's the guys that once you sleep with them, they don't run. It's, they're not leaving, but they do change. You know what I mean? Like the di the the. They say all the things they say to get you, and then once they got hope you, your face, up. hope your deep thought face. I don't it's know. So what, I don't know what Hope is thinking right now. I don't know if she wants to read me or whether she's <sighs> identifying or whether she's like, I don't get that. But, that that's uh, her. That's her deep thought. I'm taking it, 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 it. Yeah, Isis knows this face all too well. It's I could tell when we're on, when we're on the phone, all of us on the phone. I, I feel like. I feel like that's her, like, that's the face. I just it's funny that y'all say that because today, <laughs> today was the first day in a very long time that I actually got on his page. Um, and I gave him a bracelet and he usually wears this bracelet really faithfully. And um, I got on there and I realized that he wasn't wearing the bracelet or like, it, I couldn't tell, but like, I wanted to feel a way about it. So I was just like, well, he's not wearing it. And it's just like that for me starts to make things really real is like, cause people start to like remove you from their life. And I'm at a space where it's just like, it, it's starting to feel normal to not talk to him every day. But at the same time, it's still too close for it to not feel normal to want to talk to him every day. But it's just, for me, it's so toxic. And I think moving into like the next part of the conversation, like I just, What's the thing? Because I know for me, the thing that let me know that like I was just like, I can't do this anymore was when he admitted to like revealing something very personal that me, him and I discussed, you know, because he felt like there was an opportunity. Like he felt like I was leveraging my celebrity in order to cancel out another opportunity that he had to be with someone else. And... I was honestly just having a conversation and without him even thinking, because I guess, I don't know, like maybe we can attribute it to him being hurt or him like seeing things on social media and feeling like that's how that was going to go. But like when he realized that it wasn't that, it's, it's almost like I got like this bullshit apology. Like it wasn't a sincere apology because you broke my trust and you broke the trust between us. It was like, well, I'm sorry that like, I, I'm sorry that I did that, you know, like, and I was just like, you have very intimate stories about me. You have very intimate, to be honest, he has very intimate photos and videos of me. And what I was trying to get him to understand was the reason that the trust is broken now is because if you would do that because you felt like I, you didn't, it wasn't that you knew, you did that because you felt like I was ending an opportunity for you to fuck somebody else. So yeah. what would you do if you felt like I was ending an opportunity for you to get a job or something like that? And it wasn't even that way. Like, how am I to trust that you wouldn't tell people something that I've told you in confidence again, or like, like put out my personal photos or videos that I, I share with you in confidence? I need to interrupt you, but I got a question because this, this just really just popped up. Was their behavior and during the relationship that let you know that he was capable of doing something like he did? Never. No. So, no, so, so, now, so now this goes back to what I was saying. You never know someone's true colors until they don't get what they want 
or they potentially might not get what they want. Or they fear that they won't get what they want. Then they're willing to just throw all bets are off. Right. Is that what you were thinking about when I said that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because it was one of those things where never in a million years did I think he would ever. And it was it wasn't even he didn't even have proof. Yeah. That that's what it was. And he he admitted these. He admitted this to me. Like, I just thought that you were leveraging your celebrity and you were trying to pull one of those cards where it was just like you were going to rally your sister together to be like, fuck me. And I was like, but either way it goes, what this is really about is the fact that you thought that I was rallying my sister together so that you can fuck her anymore. It wasn't even that you were afraid of losing her as a friend. You were afraid of losing a sex partner because you knew that me and you weren't doing those things and that we weren't, you know, whatever. And so you were afraid of the idea of not having either one of us. And you thought that I was petty enough to be on some, like, let's rally against this per person. Yeah, but now, he was ironically, petty enough. he was petty enough to do that. He was petty. And, and, but, it's, but my thing is, ironically, her response to me just, you know, asking her as a woman some personal shit, her response to that was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to do this with you because it is hurting Hope and Hope is my sister. It wasn't on some like, oh, Hope rallied the troops. It was just like, you know what? As a woman, I'm hurting another woman and I don't know if I want to do that to her. And that was how she came at him. And then in response to that, he then turned around and released some personal information as a guy to take the pressure off of him and put it onto me. And I was just like, that's, that's completely fine. And that was the, that was well, when I knew. Not, that's not loving at all. First of all, that's not loving yeah. at all. And also that's almost, that's also kind of a bitch move. Like that's something a, that it was a would... whole, it was a whack ass nigga move. Like, it, and, I, and I said that, like, I was just like, you know, that was some whack ass nigga shit. Like for you to betray my trust, as if there are not 50,000 other bitches that would fuck you. You almost like, wanted to hope that he was too cool. You, you almost wanted to hope that he's he was too cool to do something like that. You right. know what I mean? Right. You just, you like, just look really black so and corny sad. now. <laughs> but it's just, for me, I felt like at the end of it all, like when I was sitting there thinking about it, I was like, I would have stupidly, and I hate even admitting this in public, but I would have waited as long as he fucking needed. I would have waited as long as he needed. I would have sat through this bitch, the next bitch, the bitch after her, pretending but what to about just what, But what friend. about what you needed? What about what you needed? I didn't care. Yeah, I see. That's a problem. I didn't care that's what I problem. needed because, I, because what I wanted was him. So I didn't care about what I needed because what I wanted was him. I wanted yeah. a life with him. I wanted a family with him i wanted to be married with him i wanted to build with that man and so i didn't care what hope needed because i wanted everything that he wanted i wanted him to be happy i wanted him to be set up i wanted him to be great but you see what that what the, that's a problem simply because when you get to that oh no 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 isis why are you sit is isis frozen <laughs> no i'm just like Hope you okay? Hope you going if you going to cry, let it all out, girl. Let it out and just let go, because obviously he's not worth it. You it's too much focus on him. And Riley, you need to take the same advice. Yeah, because we all, we've all we've all been there. I've been there so many times, and it's like how many times can you just give a hundred percent to somebody who's giving you twenty five? And you have Who's to just. That? And and then that's just on us to say, oh shit, I'm doing it. I'm doing that. Oh shit, yeah. they're not giving that. Oh wait, this isn't for me. And I right. get it. I get we all want that love. I thought I would be married by 27. That's not the case for everybody. You find love when you find love. I see people look at Nisi Nash. You know, she just got married to her partner. And people get married later. And it's not to say it, it's going to, you never know when it's going to happen, but the fact of the matter is you need to be put 100% in yourself and when somebody else should come along and add another half yeah, into yeah, that. You know, and, and if they're not doing that, then then you got to stop just giving because I'm not crying over another motherfucker. I'm done. I've cried way too many times. And it gets to a point you be you get exhausted from that shit. They don't deserve it. Hope, he don't deserve your tears. 
He don't deserve your tears. I'm sorry. You didn't care what Hope want. You wanted to build and all this stuff. Fuck that. Build you. Because you're next up. Yeah. And your empire is going to grow regardless. So you co you focus all that fucking energy into you. I and then everything else is going to align. But but that, that's what it is. Yeah. And when you when it's fresh and new, I guess it, it's hard to even... Because it sounds easier said than done, especially for us on the outside looking in. But you will get to a point where you will look back and be like, I can't even believe that I like I'm just too fly for for him. Like I can't even believe that I even wasted, you know, the time of on that. Mean, even if you're still friends with even though you're still if you're even if you're still friends with him. That that's not, you know, that's neither here or there. The the point is what she was just saying, like the whole thing of like you come like you, your cup runneth over, you come with your cup full within the cup is for you what spills over is for somebody else and you were just concerned about somebody else's happiness when the first thing you should have been concerned with is your own happiness yeah Bradley, you listen to everything you're saying yes i understand that but i've been there also in in fresh out of relationship or in but going into a relationship you know that's that's where i struggle with thinking like mm, my time is almost up because what you just said, you know what I mean? I'm older than two of you. The, the uh, whole, you know, yeah, I, struggle, I just turned 21. I struggle with the, the whole thing of, of I for so long thought that it was supposed to happen by a certain time. I thought it was going to happen. And now it, I'm at a point where it didn't. And I'm like, mm, is it ever going to happen? Do I just give up now? Or do I think like hold on to the next person? It just might be, let me give it one more try. Um, I struggle with that. And so I try to keep an open heart and an open mind and be like, kind of like, you know, but I mean, I know I get like giddy and I'm like, oh my God. But I say that stuff to you guys because I wouldn't, it's the stuff that I would never say to anybody else or especially the guy, you know, trust me when I'm around him, the, that guy, any guy, it's like, I'm too cool. Like I'm, I'm real cool about it. Like I'm, you, he's not gonna see me sweat at all. That I saved that for my girlfriends. Right? Oh my god, girl, he's so fine. And oh my god, girl, he said all the right things. And oh my god, he said all the stuff. Blah 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 blah. And I get it out, and then it's just out there. And I'm not sitting there. I don't have to sit and hold that in. And I'm not just sitting around thinking, oh, is it the one? Is it you know whatever? I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I, it may look like I am, but I'm not really doing that. I'm. It's just I get it out to my girlfriends because I know I'm gonna hear the real and you're going to whip me back into perspective and then I can go about, about my day and not have to, I can think of him, but I'm not thinking of like, I'm not like trying to control it and thinking this is the one and this let me, you know, whatever, finally, you know, whatever. I, just, but it's, it's I feel like when a God knows what he wants, especially in this day and age where it's so easy to swipe, I feel like a guy is going to try to lock down a girl that he really, really wants. And and I think that that's something that we overlook and we're it gets us too cool. Like we don't want to move fast and it's not about moving fast, but a guy will show you when he's serious and he know she is a fucking prize. He's not going to just let you be going out on a date to all these other guys. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. She's the one. But She's the but one. So I'm going to no, do whatever no. I can. But no, I just because that, my thing is it shows that shows up in ways like I there's a story. There's a particular story where I was I was with this guy. And we were over at his friend's house or whatever. And I'm not really sure what the friend, what the friend and his particular girl were on. Um, but I also feel like my guy kind of like told his friend that it was less serious than I was feeling that it was, right? And so now, because bro code is like, oh, well, if that ain't your girl, like if it ain't that serious, then if I feel something, I'm gonna say something. And this this young man, his his friend, found me clearly attractive. And he was making comments about it like majority of the day. And at one point in I front of in front of the guy you were dating? Yes, in front in front of the guy. Like he would say things and I could see how the guy that I was dating was like a little like you know, every time something would be said. And the, the straw that broke the camel's back that day, but also made me feel really like, okay, I see you, was I left my phone on the couch. And at the time, the screensaver 
was this really Beyonce-esque like nude of like just my back. I wasn't wearing any clothes, but it was just my back. And like I had the some long curly hair in and the light was just like really whatever. And so that was my, my screensaver. And the guy was just like, oh, whose phone is this? Because I think me and his girlfriend had like the same phone. So he lifts it up and he taps the screen. And of course the screensaver pops up. So now because he's a man, he's like, is this you? And I was like, yeah, this is me. And so now he like looking, like instead of putting my phone on the table, he like looking at the picture like, oh, like this is you, okay. Damn, you body, ma. And the guy that I was dating at the time was like, all right. And like snatches my phone from his friend and then flips it on the table, like kind of semi-aggressively. And so as a woman, that made me feel like, and especially as a woman who knew or was, you know, it's understanding of the idea that while I'm in a relationship, he's saying that he don't want to be in one. But that made me feel like, okay, we, you a little jealous. Like, you don't want other people to whatever. And there was even a point where when I had my Patreon and I was talking about different tiers and shit, um, he was just like, yeah, you should make a tier like this and I could be the only one in it. Because he, it just seemed like he wanted ownership over my body. Like, he didn't want other men to, like, be ogling me or whatever the case may be. And there was even, like, a time where... I was there visiting him and I went to the mall and I was gone for a little bit too long. And when I came back, mind you, all I had on was like a shirt and some leggings. But before I even got back, the call was just like, yeah, like you've been gone for a while. And I was like, well, just say that you miss me. He's like, yeah, but you know, like I went to sleep and woke up and you still aren't, you, you know, you still weren't back. Things like that make you feel like they care. Like it makes you feel like they really, they, they want to protect you. Like they're there for you. Like they want to, like, I don't want you to be unsafe. And I don't want these other niggas out here looking at you. And they do shit like that. But then at the same time, they'll go and fuck, fuck another bitch or whatever. Or do. Like there's all of this, like, body language and all of these things that you do as somebody who truly cares or wants to be somebody's protector or boyfriend. And it's just like, you feel some type of way. As women, those little gestures mean things to us. Like you actually caring that you feel like I've been out too long or you feeling like my outfit was a little bit too revealing. That shit that husbands and boyfriends and things do because they want to make sure that if you're going to be looking like that, I want to be with you so that these niggas don't try it. Or, you know, if this guy is hitting on me, I want to make sure he knows like, hey, nah, chill out. This is my girl. Don't be doing that. Like, why would you flip my phone or be acting X, Y, and Z if... I'm not your girlfriend. Why is he not entitled to look at a beautiful woman? I didn't have a problem with him seeing the picture. It was my screensaver. Fuck it. But you know, it's just like guys will do all of that and then still be out here like, not oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But but you know what the thing is? The difference between with with that is with me is even if I'm in a relationship with you, you still not gonna do that. You know yeah. why? Because there's a part of there's a part of me that that there's a part and, and maybe maybe this is why I'm so single, but there's a part of me of me and a part of my life that I still reserve for my career and for who I am in my own life. And that's where the trust with me has to set in. Where you trust me enough to know that even if a guy is hitting on me, even if a guy is doing all this stuff, you know, whatever, I'm not gonna act on that. You know what I mean? Like, that's not going to stop me from, that's not going to cause me to, I'm not going to let somebody disrespect you while you're, while you're, you're around, but also I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to act that way. And also part of the way I look and people ogling all over me it is part of my job. And that's a part of my life that you will never have ownership over. You're never going to have ownership yeah, over that. I will post a sexy picture if I want to, I will dress sexy if I want to. And that still shouldn't determine how that doesn't factor into I'm in a relationship. Oh, like you're not going to own any part of that. And there are a lot of women that think, Oh, this, this is sexy. He like, he really cares about me because he's so like, you know, whatever, like he's so like pr protective or he's so but like possessive. You know, he's, sometimes. Jealous. he's jealous or whatever that to me, possessive, all of that. That's not sexy to me because there's a part of my life. There's a part of me that you will never have. You'll never have, and there's a also there's always going to be a part. As long as I have this career, there's a part of me that you are going to have to be secure enough with who you are to share that with the rest of the world. Because I've dated guys who said to me like, "How come I can't just be with you? I always got to be with Riley Knox when we go out. Like I got to share you with everybody else." Well, you know what? If you want that with me, you're going to have to create that in a space 
where there's nobody else around and nobody can interrupt that. But as long as I have to go to a restaurant and I can't control whether somebody comes up and, and, and says something or does something and, and wants to take a picture or whatever, that I'm not going to be mean to people that support me because this is a part of my, this is my job. And I don't get to turn it off, shut it off, on or off. And you don't, you don't get to control that part of my life. Now that's where I draw the line. You don't have ownership of my sexual, of, of my sexiness or my being, my, what I post on wherever, none of that. I'm not going to be disrespectful and posting with somebody else, but, and I'm not going to be out there like, you know, on an OnlyFans account if that's not what you, you and I discuss. However, that there is a part of my life that you will never have any kind of control, ownership, or anything of, and that that's non-negotiable for me. It is. Maybe that's why I'm still single, and that's okay. No, I think I think you have the right to to your own body, and and nobody should ever. You should never feel like somebody. You should never feel like you have to give ownership over your body to somebody else. I, I think the difference between that is like. If I'm with somebody, I know that I'm going to always do something respectful. And if I feel like it is something I feel like, oh, that's risque, I might be like, babe, look, this is X, Y, and Z. I just want you to know. But everything I do is going to be tasteful. And everything I do is going to be, I feel like, in a, put out in a way where I've thought it out. And I think this is good for me. And I'm not going to disrespect somebody I'm with. So well, here's the difference, though, Isis. You don't do that you don't do that just being single. You know what I mean? Like Hope and I will post something that's a little bit sexual, semi-nude, semi-whatever. If they met you like that, why are you pissed that we, that I'm the same girl that you met? That's true. That's true. So Dude, wait, till, wait till I get all my body back though, because you never know. I'll be like, bam, and bam, and <laughs> add to like Hope on the train track, you know? Now don't, now, don't get me, because, and I was going to bring that up, because honestly, his one of his favorite photo shoots, like, one of his favorite pictures of me is one of those train track photos that I uh, originally posted on Instagram. And there's never been an issue with any of the things that I posted on Instagram. But I've noticed that in person, there have been small incidences where when men show interest in me, like, he would be a little, like, like you know like he gets he, there was like that alpha male sort of energy and I was just like I, I'm one of those girls that you know to Riley's point I do I kind of like that now I don't believe in the policing but I like the I like the energy that is there that energy yeah, that because it makes you feel like he's protected he's, he's the man he's yes. protective all but the, the problem with that though is just like you said before that goes to your point if he's going to be doing all that where's the title of where you can't. Here's my thing. I don't like when people do that to me, but you especially won't do that. And you're not even my boyfriend. We, I, we don't even have a title. We're not in an exclusive relationship. Like you're not going to. You're definitely not going to. You 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 better have some kind of title if you're going to come to me with that. Honestly. Right. But that's the that goes back to these guys want the benefits of the relationship without the relationship. Exactly. They want, but they know what they, they do. Access. As soon as we let them go, then they go on and they're in an exclusive relationship with the next bitch. I don't understand that. <laughs> like it's like not all the time. Is, Most of the time, they just keep the on going and, until and you know and just get what they can. Not all the time, but that's my biggest fear, and I think that even with this conversation, because I know he's gonna watch. I know you're gonna watch. I know you're gonna listen. You know, and my biggest fear, even with this, is that. Because sometimes that shit will push them and the next bitch closer because then there's like this animosity or they feel like there's this animosity. But it really, it's just like I'm allowed to heal in whatever ways I feel necessary. And especially if those ways are not like super toxic or whatever the case may be. But I feel like a lot of the times, like Isis said, it's not that they go and move on and jump into this thing with the next person. But a lot of it is that that next person, then they try to put all of your old responsibilities onto this new person. And that shit feels like 
something that is real in that moment. But what I've realized a lot of times when they jump onto the next person, that person doesn't last long. Even if it does turn into a relationship or whatever it is that you were looking for, like that shit don't usually last. It's like you see it, you be all crying about it. And before you can cry your your real last year, they broke up or you know, they don't what what a thing it. is the person like in general so I don't be worried about stuff these like men have to do the work. They have to do the work. Yeah. It's not our jobs to be their therapists, to be their lovers, to be their teachers, to be their parent, to be every fucking thing to them. They have to do the work on their own. And I think for us, we have to learn to just, mm, I don't even know, how, I don't even know what to say. I'm lost. What does work. the work look like though? I what does the work what, look what, like? What do you think that the work looks like for men? So that we're not just throwing I, I think, out I think, I think a lot of times, I, I think a lot of times it's therapy. I think it's talking it out. I think it's talking to your friends, talking to your family. Is this something that is is your let's love for real. us? Let Let's just be real. When we talk, especially in the black community, you talking about therapy. There's some of us. There's a lot of people right now that. Well, I'm talking that, about men in general because you know I like I like all different flavors. So do I. So do I. But I'm saying you said she said what does the work look look like, and you said well maybe they can try therapy. And, and, if, and, if, you, and if you don't want to go to therapy or if you feel like you have this, it's like you can't overcome, say, dating me or, or you need somebody to talk to or or you need therapy, but you just don't believe in it. Like, I, I'm just at a stage in my life where I'm not willing to do that work for somebody. You can't do the work for somebody else. So if I feel like they're just not at an emotional state where they can handle a, re a realistic relationship with me. Then I'm then then that is what it is, and they're not the person for me. Yeah, I, I, I find sure. that I've met so many men who a lot of times they are from different cultures. I have to say, where they are just so in tune with their self and who they are and and who I am, and I'm just like, oh shit, it could really, it could really be this easy. But oh see, shit, and then, and then and then it gets, but then it gets to. Are they willing to be like? Do they want a re actual relationship? That's and and that's or do they have? If from in my case, a lot of them was like, oh, they have kids. Like this one guy, oh, he had kids, and and then his relationship with the ex mom, with the his ex wife, and how that would affect the kids. I was on a show at the time when it was focused on being trans. And like, oh, if this happened, could this affect his? him getting his kids and the, and it's just like oh shit like that stuff as an adult that is kind of weird to have to deal with you know or but it's like oh shit i get it and it's like it sucks so it's just one more thing to look at like oh this person had kids it's something i have to take in consideration and we need to have a conversation about this early on and if you feel like already oh it would be an issue later on because you have kids or because you know whatever okay no, I can oh, I completely understand. Go go where? No, it's okay. I don't want. I'm, I'm just at a stage in my life where I'm not wasting my time, and and I've seen enough patterns to know. And not to say to everybody or that you should take something to everybody else, but I've seen enough patterns to know how the trajectory of a lot of situations, not just for me but for other people as well. I feel like it's a gift and a curse, but um. Yeah, you know, I it's just, just all the different things. I wish more at. men had that. I wish more men had that that thought process though, Isis. I wish that a lot more men because I think as women, um, especially when we like when we're super fed up with certain situations, like we we move into relationships and like a lot of guys be like, Oh, you just wounded. No, bitch, I'd learned. I I have truly learned and I'm sorry that it comes off as if I'm wounded, that. but I I see the signs of the hyenas coming and I I ain't trying to and get ate up today, you know? But I wish that more men took that same approach because I feel like if more men took that same approach that we have, which is when you see the signs of a woman who wants some shit that you know you don't want, X that bitch. Like, I really like it. it like, even in, in some of my conversations, I was, I was saying like, I wish you would have just been like, nah. Like, I wish that at some point before it got this deep that you would have just been like, no. Well, this most guys like, are going to not like, they take as much as they can. And that's, and that's the thing, because guys don't like the, like, we don't mind the idea of hurting a nigga's feelings. We don't mind hurting his feelings for the sake of our own, right? Let me say that. As mm -hmm. women, we don't mind being like, you know what, as awesome as you might be, as great as the sex might be or might have been, 
this ain't gonna work. And so, no. But uh, what I've noticed with a lot of men is that they will be so afraid that we can't take the rejection that they'll allow some shit to play out so far deep that by the time you actually say something, now I want to kill you. And you looking at me like I'm crazy, but had you said something on that third date when you realized that I wanted something a little bit too serious for you, we wouldn't be here. And that's why I wish more men had like that attitude that Isis was just talking about, where it's just like, when you see a sign that this person is just not aligned with what you need, I wish that men would, because I feel like a lot of the conversations that we're having too, ladies, like, it's about us taking accountability and being like, oh, you know, when you see the first sign from him and when he did it, but what about these niggas? Like they have signs too. They have things that they know are, are turnoffs for them too. And not enough men are being like, you know what? You saying you want kids. The reason that I'm with trans women is because I don't want kids. I'm out. Or you saying that you want a sex change. The reason that I'm with trans women is because I like pre-op girls. I'm out. But they don't say those things. They like let, let the beat build. And then by the time that the fucking chorus starts, they looking at you like, oh, you actually wanted to cut a track. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just playing around on the keys real quick. Like I wasn't, but you know, and it's just like, come the fuck on, dude. The problem is a lot of them are users, whether it be physical, whether it be emotional, mental, like whatever it is, a lot of them are users. So of course they're not going to do that because they're going to take as much as they can and emotionally or physically or financially drain you as much as they can. And they might have, a lot of them might not even know they're doing that. Subconsciously mm. doing that because they feel like we can handle it. We live our lives knowing that it's dangerous out here for girls like us. We have the capacity to handle their shit too and take care of them too. And that's not that's not our jobs. And and I say I say us, we have to take accountability because most of the time, girl, they're not never going to. They're gonna do and take as much as they can until you had enough. And that's unfortunate, but but I'm just they're not, gonna I'm not you know I I I I posted that shit the other day. I am not every woman. It is not all in me. And I am sick and tired. You know of what? I that saw happens. that. I saw that, and I and I. You know, it's so funny because I thought of that, and I was going to bring this up earlier because I know you've been. I don't know if you're struggling with this, but I know you've been very vocal about this lately, about how, especially, and not just trans women, but black women in general are so expected to always be so strong. And sometimes oh, yes. you don't want to be strong. Sometimes it's like, who looks out for me? And that's actually what we were talking about when, in the beginning, when I first started hitting you up, like, are you okay? What's going on? Because it's like, I'm sick of being strong. You yes. have a big presence, you are very vocal, you are very, you know, you know what I mean? You've got all this body and all this stuff and you're larger than life and you know, whatever, you're black and you're strong and all this stuff. But it's just sort of like, not only just black women, and tr but tr also tr not just tr trans women, but just black women in general are always to expect to be so strong. It's like sometimes you, you, you don't want, like it's, sometimes you don't, just because it's not just, be just, just because you are strong, let me say this. Just because you're strong doesn't mean that you don't need compassion and empathy, sympathy, and, and to be nurtured and taken care of. You know what because I'm saying? Because I honestly, I feel like, especially even in this situation, and I'm trying to be as vague as I can possibly be, but like, for me, I feel like even though there was this explicit thing of like, I'm not making a choice, I feel like a choice was made because as a black woman, I'm expected to bounce back. As a black woman, I'm expected to be able to handle the, I'm, I'm expected to be able to handle the process on my own. And so yeah. while I'm not choosing somebody else over you, you'll be all right. Cause black women are always okay. You're mm. strong. You'll be fine. You'll be mad at me. And you know, this will be a thing and you're a woman. And so I know that like whatever, but I know as a black woman, hope gonna be all right. And also because, like Riley said, because I know who Hope is, like, she'll be fine. And it's just like, but nah, nigga, I'm not. I'm not. Because I'm human. Because I'm human. I have feelings, I have emotions. I'm a real person. You know? 
And that shit, like, I feel like uh, that's the thing. I've, I've been constantly struggling with this. I've been constantly struggling with the idea of, of black women and, and the strength that we're expected to have. I've been constantly, you know, struggling with the idea of black women and the conversations around the ways in which we have to measure up to all these other women. I've been constantly struggling with this whole Megan Thee Stallion situation and the ways in which people mm. are policing black women's bodies and defeminizing us, no matter whether we're trans or cis. Mm -hmm. Like... I, I have been constantly struggling with this idea that femininity is based in these tiny fucking light skinned or exotic looking or green eyed bodies that look nothing like us. And most of the people that are chasing them are not even the people that look like them. They are men that look like us. Mm. And it's just like, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of hearing and having to see when black women are having conversations about black men, even when we talking about how they ain't shit, we love them. We love their big ass noses. We love their fucking arms. We love their height or lack thereof. And we'll still defend we and protect them. To, to, the, to the fucking death of us. We love those do men. And they do not do the same thing for us. They have mm -hmm. these fucking sidebar conversations about how we're loud and how we're too masculine and how we're not submissive enough and how we're not this or that or da 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 da, -da, -da. But then y'all go and get these carbon copy bitches that look like us in whiteface. By the way, what is this new thing all of a sudden where everyone is talking about submission all of a sudden? I keep seeing this all over social media. I keep seeing it on TV. I know Jenny Mai came out with something where she was saying she wanted to submit to her husband. But I, I was on some guy's page. He was like, I like my women submissive. I like blah, blah, blah. What is this whole new wave this this week of like the, everybody's talking about submission? The, we, the weird thing about it is I've always been submissive in my relationships, but I feel like that's something that I feel like you, you know, that's something. If you're going to be like that, you have to be like that with the right person. See, I I was like that, and I found out it was abusive. And it's just like, oh, shit, I'm in a wrong situation. But I'm naturally submissive. I know, like, lately, especially, my, my personality seem fuck them, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, but when yeah. I'm in love, but once I'm, <laughs> but once I'm in love and the person is a, another good, a good person. Like, I'm so giddy. I'm so like, what do you want? Yes. Like, I'm just like, but I'm not going to, because I know I, I'm that person. And I know I have that gift to give somebody 100%. I refuse to waste that on another motherfucker who don't deserve it. And that's where I draw the line. But so when I hear that, I'm just like, okay, like, I get it. You know, I. it's just, I mean, it's a basic conversation, I think. But I just feel like, you know, every guy just think you're supposed to submit to them. Oh, and then they say, oh, a red flag for me is when I hear a guy say he's an alpha male. If that's not a red flag that I've heard, I don't fuck with that's it. a red flag. Uh, that That is a big red flag. Because it's like, you just have to make sure the person wants, wants to take care of you once, you know, but that doesn't mean you're just going to be a princess. Like, but like you just have somebody leading home. Huh? I said, you and I were just talking about this the other day. And I, I don't think it was in our group chat. I think it was just me and you talking about how um, I'm so over that whole alpha male, like hyper masculinity, that whole really oh, yeah. macho. Because what happened is um, someone posted on uh, this guy, this couple on the shade room. And I know how you feel in the shade room, I hope. But uh, someone posted um, this what? couple in the shade room, and the guy started laughing, and it was like, Everybody was like, "Oh, he seemed like he got some sugar in his tank." He's oh. a little something, or "Oh, he he seems a little um, saucy and all this whatever that word they were using." And I was telling Hope, I was just like, I kind of feel like the slightly effeminate or the slightly kind of like it's kind of where it's at right now. Like I'm so like not into this whole hyper masculinity. Look, yeah. this whole, like it's so it. really tired and through. I live for it. If you don't have a little tinge of butch queen and you, don't talk to me. I don't, I don't, I don't have, I do not have time. The, 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 the men that I love the most are what I like to call my soft boys. Uh, those are the men that I know are men. And I know that this is my man, but at the same time, if I slip up and call him girl or bitch in a conversation, it's not going to ruin the day, you know? And I have been with those, I've been with some men where it ruins the fucking day because I was comfortable with my man and I was like bitch be quiet you know and like I've seen some men that are like that and it's just like I don't have time for that I don't have I don't want to be with a man 
that is trying to be so alpha over me and prove especially this dominance. With trans that women, especially with trans women, those guys try to really flex their their macho, their that machismo, that whole alpha male thing because but they want to prove that if I'm with a trans girl, I want to no, I'm still a dude. I'm still like I'm still rough. Like whatever. I gave you gave those you guys up in my twenties. That type of guy. But those they long gone for me. Me too. That's why I'm not into it anymore. I'm playing devil's advocate on that one because some of these trans girls be making those guys subscribe to that because I've seen plenty of our trans sisters that will dog these men out for being like that. Meanwhile, those would be the same girls that will go and date a butch queen. Like you done dog this other man out who is not that, who is not a butch queen or whatever. But the one time that he slips up and says something because he's trying to relate to you now is, oh, I don't know how I feel about him. I've seen the girls do it. It. So I think that there is some validity into why some of these guys come into that situation, but that is not the type of guy. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't want you if that's what you coming up in here. I don't need your chest poked out. I know that you're a because man. You look I like men. To me, they look insecure. Yes, that's what they look like. About their yeah. masculinity. When you walk into the space yeah. and you gotta have your insecure. chest poked out, or you know, when I see you peacocking for other niggas, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need it. Because then you're gonna um, if you police in your own masculinity, you're gonna police my femininity and then you have a problem. And I don't have time for that. I do uh, not yeah. have time for that. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, as far as that whole thing is concerned, I need a I need somebody that's a little soft around the edges. But I think this has been a good and adult conversation. I feel like we've talked about a multitude of things, especially as it pertains to like relationships or whatever the case may be. It went there, we went there, we got there. If you listen to this and you watched it, just know that it, it ain't to bash you or make you feel no type of way, bro. I still love you so fucking much. I still think that you are one of the most jiggy niggas in the world. I just don't like how this shit makes me feel. And that is it, if you get to the end of this video without being in your feelings. Um, but thank you so much, Isis and Riley, for coming on. I love y'all always. Okay. Um, and thank y'all for being a support system, but also thank you for all the gems, because I'm pretty sure that there are some girls listening like, yes, bitch, yes. <laughs> like, so especially because Isis over here dragging us by the weaves. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm here for it. But y'all already know these ladies, so I'm not going to make them drop their Instagram and all the other stuff, because y'all know who exactly, exactly who they are. But like I say this time and every time, peace, love, and hope. And we will see y'all on the next episode of Can We Talk with Old Giselle. Bye, guys.